big ass facts, haunted places. Pew, pew, pew. Mm. The Kehoe House in Savannah, Georgia. Many people believe the entire city of Savannah is cursed because the old burial grounds were covered up, paved over, and then built upon. That's never a good idea. Let's focus on the Kehoe House. In 1892, the Queen Anne Mansion was built on Columbia Square by William Kehoe, hence the name. The Kehoe House was once a funeral home. The Kehoe family had 10 children, and rumors have it that two of them tragically died in the house. Many believe the twins still haunt the house. Guests have reported hearing children laughing and feeling children stroke their hair and cheeks while they're sleeping. <laughs> no. I think part of the reason I've never wanted to have children is because I used to watch a lot of horror movies with kids in them. No. And one... One time, I had a dream that my mom told me to go to the basement to get socks for my dad, and I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning standing at the foot of their bed with four pairs of socks in my hand. Could you imagine if you opened up your eyes and there was a child at the foot of your bed? I mean, it's your child. That probably makes it less scary. But a child standing at the foot of your bed with socks? No, not today, Satan. Airedale Hospital in Australia. The Airedale Asylum was a psychiatric hospital located in what's now considered a ghost town. Airedale was once known as the Ararat Lunatic Asylum. It and its two sister asylums, Kew and Beechworth, were commissioned to accommodate the growing number of lunatics in the colony of Victoria. Construction began in 1865. It was open for patients in 1867 and remained open until 1993. At its height, Airedale had up to a thousand patients. Over its 130-year history, the hospital is said to be the location of over 130,000 deaths. That seems a bit wouldn't that mean every patient, every 130,000 deaths? Boo. The asylum is now abandoned and is one of Victoria's creepiest sites. With over 60 buildings and 100 acres, there are countless reports of paranormal activity. Visitors of the building often experience unexpected fainting, nausea, and pains while walking through certain rooms. Let's talk about J Ward. J Ward started its life as a Goldfields prison in 1859, but when the gold ran out in the mid-1880s, the prison buildings were acquired by the Lunacy Department as a temporary housing for the criminally insane. The county jail then became a ward. J Ward of the Ararat Lunatic Asylum, where the most depraved and dangerous men in Victoria were housed in horrific conditions under the highest security. The ward was closed in 1991 and is now a museum complex within the original prison structure dedicated to preserving and recording the history of the criminals imprisoned and hanged there. Allow me, my friends, to regale you with a charming tale from their website. In the early days of growing vegetables, one patient was in charge of the pumpkin patch, but he was a J Ward patient. He pulled all of the flowers off the pumpkin plants except for one. He watered it, fertilized it, and kept everybody away from it. He grew a humongous pumpkin. When it was ripe, he took it to the cooks and asked if they would make some pumpkin soup out of it. The next morning, the cooks came into the kitchen, and it was filled with an overpowering stench. The smell was coming from this huge pumpkin. After cutting open the pumpkin, they realized that the patient had cut out the top of the pumpkin, hollowed it, and used it as a toilet for a week. The Fairmont Bamp Springs Hotel in Canada. This 135-year-old hotel has been known for its amazing views of Banff National Park, also for the guests who have checked in and never checked out. The most lingering tales are of the bride, the bellman, and the bartender. The ghost bride dates back to the 1920s. The story goes, on this young couple's wedding day, the bride, decked out in her wedding gown, was descending the hotel's marble steps when something startled her. She slipped and fell. Others say her heel got stuck in the hem of her dress, yet others say that she brushed past a candle on her way down the stairs. Regardless, she died on those steps. Since then, hotel staff and guests alike have reported seeing a veiled figure moving up and down the stairs or a figure in a wedding dress dancing in an upstairs ballroom pining for the first dance she never got to have. Sam the Bellman. Sam McCauley was the head bellman during the 1960s and 70s. Supposedly, he is a helpful spirit, and most stories involving him mention some support or help he is providing to the guests. One incident involved two elderly women who called the bell desk because their key wouldn't work in their door. The original or regular bellman was busy, so he didn't respond for 15 minutes. By the time he got there, the door was open. One of the women said they were helped by an older bellman in a plaid jacket, matching Sam's description exactly. Other stories include guests seeing Sam haunting his old office, which is now a guest room, on the mezzanine floor, as well as seeing apparitions and feeling cold spots on the 6th, 7th, and 9th floors of the hotel. The apparition of the bartender has been witnessed by staff and guests alike, often informing guests that they've had too much to drink and perhaps they go to bed. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. My dad once saw, thought he saw a ghost. He too, like the hotel patrons, was just drunk. 
Guests have reported having pillows yanked out from under their heads while they slept or even being pushed off the bed by some unseen entity. In room 873, the story goes that an entire family was murdered there, and ever since, guests in the room have reported being awakened by screaming. When they turn on the lights, there was bloody handprints on the mirror. Depending on who tells the story, the handprints either disappeared before hotel staff had a chance to clean them, or they wouldn't come off at all. During the construction of the original wooden hotel, there was a significant error from the contractor. A room was built with no windows or doors, which wasn't even shared with the hotel owner. The room was only discovered after a fire broke out in 1926. Since then, apparitions are often seen roaming the hall outside of this room. 